Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to go over an example with you in Excel that will show you how you can use the dividend discount model to value a stock in a situation where the dividends are expected to grow, but they're expected to grow at a different rate at different points in time. So maybe the growth rate is higher in the beginning, maybe for the first few years, then it reduces to a lower rate before it stabilizes to some constant growth rate in perpetuity. So here's an example. So let's suppose there's a company called Wasaka Incorporated and it's just paid a dividend of $2.65 per share. Now maybe the company is growing right now at a fast rate, so the company's thinking we're gonna be able to grow our dividends at a rate of 30% over the next couple of years. So years one and two, they're expecting to grow dividends by 30% but the growth is maybe going to taper off. So in years three to four, the rate of growth of dividends is gonna to drop to 15%. And afterwards, the company's thinking, you know what? Starting year five, we are only going to be able to grow our dividends at 4% forever or perpetually. And the question is, what is the worth of the shares today? So for questions like these, I always recommend that you make a timeline where you are at time period zero, and you know that at the end of year one, the dividend is going to be whatever it was at the end of year zero or today, so 2.65, and you're gonna multiply that by one plus 30%, because dividends are expected to be 30% more in year one than they were today. And so this means that dividend at the end of year one is expected to be $3.45. Similarly, at the end of year two is gonna be this, multiplied by one plus this 30%. In years three and four, the dividend is going to be growing at a rate of 15%. So 4.48 multiplied by one plus 15% here. And then in year four, it's gonna be whatever this was multiplied by one plus 15% here. Now, after this, in year five, constant growth is going to kick in, which means in year five, dividend is going to be this much into one plus the 4%. And now this is going to go on forever and ever and ever. So now for questions like these, I recommend that you draw a hypothetical timeline which starts in the year in which your constant growth rate is kicking in. Now, in our case, the constant growth rate of 4% kicks in after year four. So you get 4% and then 4% and so on and so forth. So this is what you do. You draw a hypothetical timeline which starts at the end of year four. On this hypothetical timeline, you're expecting that at this point, your dividend is going to be $6.16 and beyond this, it's gonna be growing at a constant 4%. If somebody asks you what is going to be the price of the stock at this point, which on our original timeline is basically year four. So in other words, price in year or at the end of year four, which I'm gonna call P4, here you can use the constant growth model for this hypothetical timeline because on this timeline, dividends are expected to grow at a constant growth rate of 4% forever. And so here you can do equal to 6.16, which is the dividend that you're expecting in year quote unquote one, divided by R minus G. Your required rate of return is given, which is 10%. You subtract the 4%, so you get 102.66. Once you have figured out what the stock is gonna be worth at the end of year four, on your original timeline, you're saying, look, I am getting $3.45 here. I, and I'm gonna copy this and paste this for years one, two, and three, which means that in year two, I'm gonna get dividend of 4.48, then 5.15, but at the end of year four, I'm getting 5.92, but then also a stock that is worth $102.66. Why? Because this is the worth of all the dividends that lie beyond year four. So you don't explicitly need to account for them anymore. Basically, all you have to do is say, at the end of year four, I'm going to be getting $5.92 plus a stock that is worth 102.66. This is what I can sell it for because this 102 
reflects the worth of all the dividends that anyone holding that stock will get from this. So now at time period zero, if somebody says, hey, what is the worth of these expected dividends to you? You say, ah, you know what? Just do NPV in Excel or basically discounted value of these cash flows. My required rate of return is 10% and the cash flows that I'm expecting are just these four numbers. That's it. That's it. These four numbers. And so when you do this calculation, you get $84.87. And that is how you value a stock in which the constant growth rate kicks in at a later, later time because you have differential rate of growth in dividends for some number of years in the beginning. If you found this video useful, click the like button and subscribe to the channel. And feel free to ask any questions using the comment section. Happy learning.